Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime 5, the five biggest news stories for video games in the last 24 hours, in particular focusing on Nintendo. The weird thing here though is that it's really just a four pack today. Sorry, I just, yeah, nothing else really felt right next to the four stories we've had. I could have talked about a lot of indie game news, but honestly it would have felt completely overshadowed by the four big stories we got for you today. So we're back, let's get right into it. Roll that intro. And our first story today deals with the Switch Pro 2. Ooh. New Switch hardware. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. I know there's going to be some angry commenters already. I apologize, but let's actually see what the news is first, shall we? So, we might actually have some spec details on potential new Switch hardware. Again, rumors, treat them as you should. Put the tinfoil hat on. Uh, so a user over on Famiboards, known as Polygon, not to be confused with the popular gaming news website of the same name, apparently knows some developers working on games for new Switch hardware. So they claim. The dev kits themselves have 16 gigabytes of RAM, but they are reportedly making games to run on 12 gigabytes, which would be the retail unit's total RAM. That's an 8 gigabyte increase from the current Switch. Reportedly, the system power-wise is basically a PlayStation 4 with DLSS, meaning it can output PlayStation 4 Pro-like gaming performance. The game he knows is being worked on seems to be targeting 480p native and handheld, but uses DLSS to make it 720p. The screen also happens to still be natively 720p. Using the extra GPU headroom from using DLSS to really up the visual elements in the game. Knows nothing about when it is going to be actually announced, but the source does say that it's coming out in spring of 2023. This does line up with some fan expectations for it to launch alongside Breath of the Wild 2. He does not specify how Nintendo categorizes it. So is it a Pro, is it a 2, a new Nintendo Switch? For what it's worth, Nate Drake does say at least the power of the system that this person is claiming is in line with what he heard from developers in 2021. If this is all true, it sounds like maybe the Pro hype last year was because that was the year developers got their hands on dev kits making them expect it sooner rather than later. Now, again, this is all just speculation and rumors, and I can't verify any of this information. That's, the, the, that's really what rumors are. They're, it's unverifiable. We're just going to have to wait and see. I know some people are kind of tired of talking about Switch Pros, and I get it, okay? It's not the only story we got. So instead of us talking more about it, let's get into the next one, which is, again, yet another rumor and speculation, but at least it's on something that's very likely, and that's because Nate the Hate went out on Twitter and stated emphatically, I think he actually said it in his most recent podcast as well, we're getting a Nintendo Direct in September. Well, it's not September yet. Now, this isn't really a bold take considering Nintendo has had some form of a Nintendo Direct in the last six September, so six years in a row, two years ago being that little bit of an oddball one because it wasn't a general Direct, but they still did have a Direct Mini. So yeah, look, Nintendo is doing what Nintendo does. It's not really a bold take to say there's going to be a Direct in September. Now, he doesn't know if it's a general Direct or if it's another Mini or Showcase. Again, there's a lot of different avenues Nintendo could take. A lot of people are expecting a Direct announcement any minute. I don't think we're going to see a Nintendo Direct until after Splatoon 3 comes out, which comes out September 9th next week. But hey, who knows? Nintendo beats the beat of their own drum. They could have a Direct tomorrow or Thursday or screw it and throw one out on Saturday just to really throw off our expectations. So Nintendo's going to Nintendo. Probably going to get a September Direct because bare minimum, they got to start advertising a little bit about what's coming after the holidays. Next up, we actually had a really interesting date to Nintendo published games on Switch. So we now know that 55 games published, not made by, but published by Nintendo, have now crossed 1 million in sales thanks to a new sales update that updated some old games we haven't had updates on 
really in years. And that data runs through December 2021. Obviously, we also have current data for the stuff Nintendo has shared. What's really interesting in looking at this list is you're going to see a lot of titles that clearly are third-party games, like Octopath Traveler. However, it's notable that Nintendo actually published that game in the West, meaning that it crossed a million sales just from Nintendo, let alone from what Square Enix did when they published it in Japan. So this is just stuff to keep in mind that just because it's published by Nintendo doesn't mean it's made by Nintendo and doesn't mean it was exclusively published by Nintendo. But it is cool to see 55 games. Literally, a game selling a million units for a indie studio can make the career of that studio. But here we are sitting with Nintendo and going, huh, this is actually really, really interesting. I don't know. I think this is just kind of a neat story. And fun fact, we're actually linking to our own website for this new story. This episode is actually sponsored by the Nintendo Prime website, where you can get all of your Nintendo news even quicker than you can get it here in video form. Kind of neat, huh? And our last story is actually about a brand new Nintendo Switch competitor heading to the market. And you might think, oh, what's Sony got cooking? What's Microsoft got cooking? Heck, maybe Google is entering into the fray. Is Apple going to make something? No, it's Logitech. That's right, some images leaked for a brand new Logitech gaming handheld called the Logitech G Gaming Handheld. Oh my gosh, what a unique name. Now, you've probably heard of other PC-style uh, gaming handhelds with the Steam Deck and the Aya Neo, Nexus, a whole bunch of other ones that exist out there. However, this one's a little bit different because, one, they're DMCAing, like, everybody posting the images, so... We're going to take a shot here and post the images in our video and hope that because it's a Nintendo video, they leave it alone. We'll find out. That might be a mistake. I don't want a copyright strike, but I'm not going to stop me from reporting on this. Uh, it does, We don't really know the specs for it right now. There's a lot of speculation around it because all that really leaked was the images. It does look like it's running stock Android or some form of Android, which makes people kind of make, oh, it's some sort of phone chip maybe. We've seen Android gaming devices before, but this one is more akin to the size of a Switch. You can see in the one image of it in someone's hands, it looks more like the size of a Nintendo Switch than it does, say, a Steam Deck. Maybe that lends credence to it being, you know, mobile phone technology. Don't know, but it is running Steam. We see a Steam icon. We also see an Xbox Game Pass icon, and along with our YouTube and Chrome and stuff. So I don't really know what to think about this other than that it is something that exists. Logitech is not happy this leaked out. These do look like finalized marketing materials, so... Definitely looks like something that they were planning to announce, but the cat's sort of out of the bag at this point. All, the, all that's really left to remain is what's the tech that runs in it, and obviously how high up can it run games? Can it run big AAA games? Is it competitive with things like the Nintendo Switch or even beyond the Switch, heading towards the Steam Deck and stuff like that? Can it compete with that? Don't know because we don't know what's actually inside, and technology has evolved since the Steam Deck came out. So it could be using something even newer, could be really expensive, could be using something even cheaper. Psh, you know, whatever. Logitech, cat's out of the bag. You might as well just announce it at this point. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank all you guys for tuning in to today's episode of the Prime 4, I suppose. Uh, we do have an exclusive t-shirt that's only available to buy this week for Prime 5. If you guys are interested, you don't have to go get it, but it's a limited thing. You can only get it this week, and it'll never be back again. So, hey, if you really enjoy these Prime 5 episodes and want to support the channel with a t-shirt purchase, I'd greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, folks, I'll catch all of you guys in tomorrow's episode.